All right, Shalom. Okay, I want to give uh, all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Um, Bahashim Raka Kodash. All right, I want to give double honors to our apostles and elders of GMS and uh, to the elect out there doing the work in sincerity and in truth. I want to say Shalom. Uh, my name is Nazar Khad. This is uh, GMS pre Precepts once again. And uh, I was going over Second Ezra's the seventh chapter, which is a bad chapter when Ezra's is speaking to the angel. Okay, and um, I wanted to I, I wanted to read forty three and a forty fourth verse. Okay, all right, because uh, these are the days that we're approaching, man. And if you know about this about Ezra, um, his book is heavily he his book revolves heavily around prophecy. Okay, now as it as it states in Revelation um, nineteen and eleven, I believe. Okay, the spirit of Yahweh Shai is a spirit of prophecy. So his men that are in one mind with Yahweh Shai are going to be concerned with prophecy. Right? Okay? And about and they will be concerned about his his uh when he returns. Now you got <laughs> I got a you know, I'm, you know I'm in a group chat with a, a few brothers and they sent me a, a image a image of a uh, a Nate you know, with his permed out beard, you know, Nate the Snake, and he has on his Instagram or social media how to uh, not break up your marriage or how to fix your marriage. You see, those are the things that they're concerned with. They're concerned with the family structure, keeping the family together, okay, um, um, uh, rectifying one's marriage. You know, bi bi building up schools here in America, um, trying to steal money from the damn congregation to get a G5 plane to start jet setting in style. You know, those are the things that they're concerned with. Now, are they concerned with prophecy? OK, instead of keeping a marriage together, how about avoiding these missiles, man? OK. How about avoiding all the perils that are set to take place on this place, America, or in, in our people? You know, well, let me let me get into this. Um, this is uh, Second Ezra, the seventh chapter, forty third verse. Right? It says, <coughs> it says, but the day of doom shall be the end of this time. All right. Now let's stop right there. The day of doom. What is this date now? If one smart person would see this and read this scripture they would say wow what what is this day of doom what is this day of doom speaking about okay because the speaker the the scriptures cover the day of doom right now i ha i have here zephaniah uh the first chapter okay i'm going to start at 14 actually okay it says Zephaniah 1 and 14, the great day of the Lord is near, and you best believe it's near. Now, how do we know? How do I know it's near? Okay? Or if you hear anybody that says, oh, the day of the Lord is near, how does that person know that the day of the Lord is near? By the by the, uh, by the the prophecies unfolding, man. Okay? Habakkuk 2, the second chapter says, for that vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end that the, it shall speak. Okay? Now, we're, that's how you know we're at the end right now, because those visions that were written back then, they're speaking now. OK, and part of those visions are uh, consist of what the mark of the beast, the RFID chip. OK, wars and rumors of wars. OK, uh, countries shall rise up against nation shall rise up against nation. These are the things. Hell, there's one. Is this one? Hell. Uh, Zephaniah 1 and 11. This is another vision that's speaking right now. I'll read it. How, how Zephaniah 1 and 11. It says, How ye inhabitants of Maktesh, for all the merchant people are cut down, all they that bear silver are cut off. Now we know Maktesh was, was an ancient uh, uh, city um, that's comparable to Wall Street. Okay? Now it says, how ye inhabitants of Maktesh, for all the merchant people are cut off. All they that bear silver are cut off. So 
uh, the equivalent to Mac Tesh right now is Wall Street. And if you watch the news, you see you you can clearly see something is going you know, something's not right. It said there was an article I read that it said this this second quarter is the worst quarter is the worst second quarter since the uh Great Depression in 1930. Okay? And you had a brother that sent uh it actually was with Pop Moth in the group chat. He sent out he sent out a, a article saying that um uh you have bill you you have you have billionaires let me see if I can pull it up you you have billionaires that that uh pulled out a lot of money in the month of in the month of March give me a second let me see uh let me read that article or the the article real quick okay yes it says investors have pulled a remarkable 40 billion dollars from US stocks since mid March. Okay. Mid March. Let me see. Look at that. And it, it it's right now where it's what April fourth. So mid March, that was a few weeks, man. So the second week in March to the end of March, they pulled out forty billion dollars from US stocks. Okay. Hey man. How it says what? I read it again. How ye inhabitants of Maktesh. Okay. So let me jump back down to fourteen. The great day of the Lord is near. How do we know it's near? By the prophecies that are unfolding on it daily. Right? Excuse me. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and it and hasteth greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord. The mighty man shall cry there bitterly bitterly. OK, and that mighty men are the ones that are well off in the society, man. Those are the ones that are going to jump off the goddamn building and commit suicide because they lost everything, man. Yo, this 2018 is starting off in, in a in a in a, a, a bad way for America. OK, you had the YouTube sh shooting. What was it yesterday? Or a few days ago. Which which is all set up. You know, you know, that story just didn't, you know, the first story, the first stories that came out. I remember reading when that when it first happened, I read that it was, uh, you know, a girl that shot up her, her boyfriend and two other females. Now, I w then I woke up and now they're saying it was, you know, somebody that had a YouTube page and she was upset. So she w went to the YouTube and just shot up random people. You know what I'm saying? So the story is at night. The story is like, and and, and obviously got to be YouTube because they plan on shutting. That's just going to give them more avenues, avenue or leeway or, or uh, a reason to shut down or to execute that uh, net neutrality, man. Because we know that's their end game. Their end game is to uh, enact or pass the net, net neutrality, which is scheduled to uh, get passed this month. Okay. Which is gonna further sp uh, uh, cause uh, more of the famine of the word, man. All right, because the thing, what the thing, what um, you know, America passed or or they're allowed to do, pursuant to the NDAA, Natural Defense Auth Authorization Act, they wrote a stipulation in there where they can lie uh, to the people through news media, through stage events, to pass uh, any legislation or to sway the opinion of the masses. So knowing that, how can you believe anything that you read on the news, man? Okay? They they can take a real event and then turn it into a whole news story to, to uh, say, all right, uh, to, to, to say, all right, I want gun control. Let's make this story about this. Yo, I want to shut down the internet and, and enact net neutrality. Let's let this story be about this. Or or they can just do it themselves. Right? Let me continue. Okay, as I digress. This is uh, Zephaniah 1 at, 1 at 14. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near. It hasteth greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. Verse, verse 15. 
that day is is a gr- is a day of wrath a day of trouble and distress a day of wasteness and desolation so this is not a a happy day man this is not going to be a day where you know the birds are chirping and and uh you know the flowers are blooming and um every uh, everything's uh, everything's happy okay it's explaining the day of the lord and it says a great day not a great day in happiness a great day in death okay it says the day is a day of wrath a day of trouble and distress a day of wasteness and desolation when something is desolate when something is desolate is nothing left let's look into the word what's this let's go into the word desolation okay it's ma sha wa wa a ma ma sha ma sha wa okay excuse my pronunciation if it wasn't uh on point but desolation ruin i mean that pretty you don't need to uh that 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 pretty much sums it up desolation ruin waste desolation okay and that's what's going to happen ultimately to america america is going to be desolate meaning nothing is going to be left here in america okay it says that um a day of of trouble and distress a day of a day of wasteness and desolation a day of darkness and gloominess a day of clouds and thick clay a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers and that's speaking about what america man okay this place america is going to be uh destroyed ultimately by those missiles man all right now going back to ezra's now that we know what the day is but the day of doom shall be the end of this time now what time is this referring to what's this time that's just referring to was referring to the time um of our slavery man okay this is what this is the point of the lord returning okay he's he's coming to return to deliver us out of this hell that we're in matter of fact uh let me get that. Let me get that. Let me uh let me get Revelation. I believe it's Revelation twenty one. Boom. R- is Revelation twenty one and four. And the most high shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. So these are the things that are going to be done away with. This is a time that's going to be over with. The time of our captivity, the time of death, the time of sorrow. Every time you wake up, this is you you can uh I don't, I don't see how anybody could be happy here in America. That's why it tells you in Ecclesiastes the seventh chapter um uh what does it say, man? I'm I'm bad at uh Ecclesiastes Ecclesiastes 7, okay, 7 and 7, S- surely, o- there you go, Sh- Ecclesiastes 7 and 7, surely oppression maketh a wise man mad, okay, every day I wake up, I'm mad, I don't want to go to fucking work, here it is, it's 1120, I gotta, w- I-, I gotta go to work in a few hours, man, god damn, bullshit, I say, okay, so, but the day of doom shall be the end of this time and the beginning of immortality for it to come. Now, what's his immor- immortality, man? This is speaking about, what is it, uh, uh, Corinth- 1 Corinthians 15 chapter when it speaks about uh, the in- in- incorruptible shall become, um, the corruptible shall become incorruptible. Okay? Meaning we're going to be invincible. We're going to b- We're going to live forever, man. Death, that's when death is going to be swallowed up. That's why it says, oh, death, where is thy sting? That's when death is going to be conquered. Didn't Yahweh Shai conquer death? Okay. It says, in the beginning of the immortality to come, where incorruption is past. Because everything here in this society is corruptible, man. These fucking puny bodies are corruptible, man. You know, here it is. You 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 try to you try to eat the correct foods. You try to, 
you know, go to the gym, diet, you know, the best way you can. But then you still got a fucking ache or pain here and there. You know, the, the foods is all fucked up. I don't give a fuck. E- even if it is uh, so-called organic, okay, with and, and it hasn't been sprayed with any pesticides, guess what? The soil that it's planted in, it doesn't have all the nutri- nutrients and minerals that it's supposed to have, man. Okay? I believe soil is supposed to have about 93 uh, nutrients and minerals, okay? But now the land is so corrupted and polluted that it only has about like 21 or 23, uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, m- minerals in there, okay? That's why we are, that's why through the age we, we have become, that's why it tells you in Apocrypha, we have become weaker through age. Because this whole... We're, we're, this whole this whole system, this whole place, this whole earth is corrupted. <coughs> Excuse me. It says we're in corruption is past. Intemperance is at an end, right? Let's look up the word. Int- I looked up the word intemperance. So let's look it up again because I. It says intemperance, lack of moderation or restraint. Sh- restraint. God damn, that's America. That's America right there, man. Here it is in America. They teach you you can do all, you can do what you want to do. What does it say again? Lack of moderation or restraint. You can do whatever you want to do. You can have sex with however many people you want to fucking have sex with. You can worship this, worship that. All that shit is going to end, man, because there are guidelines, man, that in the kingdom, all the nations are going to adhere to. All the nations, they're going to adhere to the law, statute, commandments. And they're going to worship the one true power. All this intemperance here in America and all over the earth, that's going to come to an end. Right? Infidelity is cut off. Right? Adultery, man. Let's, let's look up. I already know. The action or state of being unfaithful to a spouse or other sexual partner. Infidelity is cut off, man. Here it is. In the, in, uh, adultery is pushed. Uh, adultery is pump, uh, is is a pr- uh, adultery is promoted here in America. If you don't want to sleep with another man's woman, you you looked up you you looked at as an outcast. As crazy as that sounds, man, you looked at as an outcast. Like nigga, what? You don't want so what? That shit is gonna come to an end, man. And also, this you you can also use that to w- worship in other gods, man. In in other false religions, because that is a form of adultery as well. Okay, that's going to be cut off. Okay, righteousness is grown, and truth is sprung up. Now, this last two right here, you can say that we're in the beginning stages stages of that right now, through through the men, right? Righteousness is grown, and truth is sprung up because the truth is is springing up right now. This truth is. Growing, growing, and growing, man. Okay? The truth is sprung up. Faith is... Matter of fact, I believe... Uh, where it speaks of faith. Um, What verse was that? When it speaks of faith. Uh, I, I'll... I'll uh, let me see if I can find it. No, I can't. I can't find it, man. Probably right in my face, but I, I I just um. But faith also is is uh, increasing, also, man. Truth is springing up as well as faith, and faith is increasing, man. All right. The closer we get to the destruction of America, the more the elect's faith is gonna grow. You saw that uh, there are chariots. Now it's funny. The other, uh, I believe it was the week prior. Um, you know, there's been you know uh, brother saw chariots at the main camp, and um. The brother Amwan Gabar, he was showing me and Barack Gabar, cause he he saw one chariot. He didn't see all those chariots that, you know, that was in the video. He saw one. It was way up in the sky, and he tried to show me and Barack, and we was like, "Yo, we can't see it. That's just meant for you to see it, man." But it's not like I didn't believe it. Was, I I, I, be, I believed he saw it, but I'm like, man, I can't I can't see it. Me and Barack couldn't see it, but then we saw the video. It was not only one. It was like. Eight to ten chariots, man. 
And I remember that day. That was like two weeks ago. It was like eight to ten chairs just flying around, doing wheelies, donuts. You know? Matter of fact, let me, uh, matter of fact, I was reading that scripture just now. Second Kings, the sixth chapter. Second Kings, the sixth chapter. That's a bad, uh, let me jump down to the point. Second Kings 6 and 17, it says, and Elisha, because when, 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 um, when he was showing, when he was trying to show me and Barak, we couldn't see it. I thought of this scripture. This is Second Kings 6 and 17. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Now that's going into what? Though all those or all the angels, man, the chariots that were in the sky. And that's what I thought of when the brother tried to show us this the, the chariot, but we couldn't see it. Okay? But the simple fact that it was on video and and you could see the, the amount of chariots that were there, I was like, Whoa, that was a faith booster right there, man. All these prophecies that come about, because they're gonna be more chariot sightings, those are all faith boosters, man. Let me let me just try to find this. Uh, let me try to find the one I wanted about faith. Uh, bear with me. Let me, let me uh, try. I don't know where the pause button is. Give me a second. Might have to edit this. Boom, boom, boom. See? Sometimes I'm a little stubborn and it pays off. It's verse 33. Now it says, verse 7, second edge of 7 and 33. It says, And the Most High shall appear upon the seat of judgment, and misery shall shall pass away. And the long suffering shall have an end, but judgment, sh but judgment only shall remain. Truth shall... St now this is speaking about in the kingdom, though, when we're going to execute judgment upon the heathen, man. And bound them damn devils with them chains. Alright. It says. And the most high shall appear. I'm sorry. And the most high shall appear upon the seat of judgment. And the, and the misery shall pass away. Just like I read in, in, in Revelation the 21st chapter. How we're going to have no more pain again man. Okay. Revelation 21 and 4. And the most high shall w wipe away all the tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. Right? It says, and so, uh, um, where am I at? And the most I shall appear upon the seat of judgment, and misery shall pass away, and the long suffering shall have an end. But judgment only shall remain. Truth shall stand, and faith shall wax strong. Our faith is going to be real strong. You can say, I wanted to bring this out because you can say that this is, this is, we're in the beginning stages of that faith becoming stronger and stronger because we're getting closer and closer to this time period, man. We're getting closer and closer to this time period. Okay? So, I mean, let me see. Intemperance is at an end. In infidelity is cut off. Righteousness is grown and truth is sprung up. That's the two verses I wanted to hit um, pretty much. All right. So until the next show, I want to say shalom.